mic. All I need is one mic. One mic. This is the Tan Man. My brother built a shed in the backyard without windows, without air, just room for a bed to hold him down, to keep him in place. He had lost all his thorny armor some years ago, chewed away by the madness that transformed him into abstract, twisted art. No pattern, no recognition. Until my brother, an artist driven by a different muse, found a fortress with a brush and a can of silver paint. Silver aluminum paint coated his barbed wire skin. Work boots and kitchen cabinets lined up, military steel and pristine. Faded roses lay trampled run over by the old pickup tires he painted a darker shade of silver than the moon. While our mother, with her tarnished hair hidden, tried to gather him in. Bubba's gone bone digging. All right. Yes, ma'am. Several months ago, I went to see my cousin. You know him. We all know him. He lives out in the country with his wife, a pit bull, a goat, 11 chickens, six kids, his wife. All in that order. They're a bit different, but we grew up together, and none of that matters because we're family. We're outside his trailer talking, and I tell him some of the things I've been into lately. I can never resist the urge to sound just a little smarter, a tad more sophisticated. He just scoffs and frowns and says, now you know, Darla Jean, I don't get into that newfangled, new age sort of stuff. What's that all about, anyway? I say, never mind, feeling superior. He tells me his back is really bothering him. He was in a wreck, and it's pure torture. I suggest to get off the pain pills and try some yoga and acupuncture. Acupuncture, he says, well, I ain't doing no time as a pincushion, and I sure as hell don't see me doing no yoga. I choke back a laugh because he is a regular Billy Bob Buddha, all round and smiling. But <laughs> <laughs> <And> I say, <laughs> no more to him, just tell him I hope he gets better. Week before last, I went back to see him, and we're out in his garden, and he tells me he's been doing a lot of walking, getting lost in thought, losing himself, losing the pain. Good, I say, great. He shows me his new jacuzzi, and I get ready for stories of orgies. He was always more than just a little sexually obsessed. When he never even once mentions anything like that, I start to look at him differently. Gary Paul has changed. He tells me, I sit out here at night when the kids are all asleep, look at the stars, look at the coyotes. Do you remember back in Austin during the meteor showers? I was right here, front row center, but you couldn't even see them back in Austin. He was right. I drove and drove to find a place without artificial light. He goes on, I sit out here and something happens. I don't know, I realize I haven't even been thinking. Bubba's been meditating. <laughs> we go inside his trailer and there are all sorts of wonderful animal skulls he has found. He's painted them with hearts and crosses, hung feathers on them, little, made little birds from backbones. There is a skull from a goat painted hellfire red that is true and scary. Bubba's been bone <laughs> And on a wall by itself is the most amazing skull of all. I say, wow, look at that. It's made from the skull of a wild boar and painted with signs and symbols and patterns. I didn't get too close to it. I could feel it had magic. I was amazed and I told him so. Wow, Gary Paul, you could sell that stuff for a lot of money in Austin or Houston. He says, oh, I don't think so. It's just an old skull I found and painted. I go over to look at it closer. The creature has a forked tongue. He says that the tongue was made from a piece of old inner tube. I tell him, Gary Paul, this piece is inspired. I say, where'd you get the idea for this? Where'd this come from? He tells me it followed him from a dream. 
He said, I dreamed this monster was coming after me, getting closer and closer, and I woke up and I went walking, and I found this skull and I made it into the monster as fast as I could. And I swear, ever since I did that, there hadn't been so much pain. Probably just coincidence. I said, probably not. And I tell him to forget what I said about selling it. Gary Paul, you keep this right here on your wall where it belongs, tamed. He said, well, I wasn't about to sell it, so I felt dumb and shut up. <laughs> Bubba's been bone digging and uncovered a warrior, traveling the backcountry roads to enlightenment. When I was a baby, the first steps I took were steps to keep up with him. Bubba went bone digging, and I'm going with him too next time, if he deems me worthy. Thank you. <laughs>